7. Now, a cap on the amount of benefits households can receive in England, Scotland and Wales is introduced today. The maximum is set at £26,000 a year. The government says the measure, which has been piloted by four councils in the London area since the spring, will encourage people back to work. But campaigners fear it doesn't take into account the higher cost of housing in some areas and will hit large families particularly hard. Devon Galani is the Director of Policy and Practice, a consultancy that works with councils. Hello Devon. Good morning. And Matthew Reid is the Chief Executive of the Children's Society. Hello Matthew. Good morning. Uh, Devon, first of all, with this pilot's been running uh, for councils in London. What's the feedback? Well, I think, uh, first of all, it's been, an, from, the, from the general public's point of view, it's been an incredibly popular measure. I think from the council's point of view, it's been an incredibly difficult one to implement. Um, the councils that we've worked with have uh, done everything they can to provide the right level of support to families that perhaps haven't had this kind of support for you know, many, many years before that. And I think uh, if you're looking for uh, benefits out of, this, um, out of this policy, then it's the fact that actually some families are actually starting to see support and are starting to get into work that perhaps otherwise right. Done. Well, that, and that's the point. You say it's, it's popular with the public, and, 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 and certainly polls would would have you believe that. But the, the main question is not whether it's popular; it's whether it's working. So, what are the figures? How many people in the pilot areas are, back, are going into work? That's true. Um, well, we haven't worked specifically with those in the pilot areas. We've been working far more closely with some of those London authorities that have taken um, who see the benefit cap coming into force in about four weeks' time for them, and they've been working for the last three months to try and prepare some of these families to get ready and get back into the workplace. Some of the results from those uh, local authorities have been incredibly positive, actually. So we've seen three times as many families going to work as compared to um, those in the pilot area and those in the control group. Um, some, we're publishing a report later on today that perhaps other councils can learn from, where we detail some of the work that Lewisham Council's done, who have been working on this since January, um, looking at exactly all of the things that they learned, what worked, what didn't work in terms of supporting okay. some of these families. So Matthew, really, it's, it's beginning to be, it would seem a success story. People are going to work, then they're, they're not relying on benefits, they're, they're getting out of their house and they're, and they're getting a the job because it doesn't pay to stay at home. Well, I think what I heard Devon saying was in, that some people are, are finding a way to get back into work again, that's, um, that's certainly much to be commended. I think the biggest concern here is the sheer number of children who are affected by the benefit cap. Um, although this is affecting about 40 or 40,000 um, 40, families or so, it's about 140,000 children have been affected by this cap around the UK. Um, that's about twice as many children live in Bristol, so this is a large number of children. Although for some families, um, getting back into work is obviously a good thing, um, many families would like to get back into work but can't do because of the inaccessibility of childcare, uh, the high cost of childcare, or in fact there just isn't enough work in the area to happen. For those families, this is going to be a really, really difficult time for those children. It's going to be devastating. Uh, and Devon Galani, what kind of help is there for families in that position? Well, I think what, we, what frontline advisors have seen is just the, the level of resilience in some of these families and the strength of character in some of these families that really want to take steps to get back into work. What they've been able to do is, for example, offer them support, offer them one-to-one -one support in terms of an action Levels plan. of resilience, what does that mean? They just have to put up with it? No, levels of resilience in terms of actually they, they sort of see the cap coming into effect. Once they understand quite how much they're getting today, the impact that the cap's going to have, and the benefits of moving into work, and the fact that for the first time perhaps they can actually see that there'll be significant well, they might be, yeah, but they might they be able will to take steps. Yeah, but they might be able to see that there's a benefit to getting back into work, but what if they can't get back into work? What if there are no jobs, for example? Or, as Matthew said, they can't sort out childcare, all sorts of issues. Yeah, and that's been the kind of support that lo the local authorities we've been working with have been uh, offering to some of these families to make sure that they're getting the support they need to get back into well, work. Does that mean financial support? No, often it's one-to-one uh, -one support in terms of uh, an action plan, spending an hour with an advisor, getting signposted towards a uh, job centre plus, a, a trained train job centre plus advisor, um, to make sure that they take specific steps that help them to get back into work. And you are starting to see how, some positive No, no, but Devin, that. hang on. Yeah, but how does that help them get work? The fact that you point them to a Job Centre Plus advisor, they could do that anyway. They could walk off the street and go to a Job Centre Plus advisor. And how does it help them with the cost of childcare if they want to go back to work? I think the level of support going into supporting some of these households that we've seen has been far more intense than anything that they've ever seen, that they've ever had before. Um, and for the first time, they're actually sort of starting to become engaged in that process themselves because the impact that the cap's having is, is actually showing them that if you, don't, if you don't take certain steps into work, then actually things are going to become quite, quite difficult for you. So a combination of those two impacts, the, the cap going into effect yeah. and the level of support they're okay. getting. Matt, Matthew, read, briefly, do you accept that, that there has to be some short-term pain here for long-term gain, that the, 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 the families of this nature need an impetus to get back into work and, and this, this is providing it, the cap's providing it? 
I don't, affect, I don't accept that um, children in the United Kingdom should ever have to pay the price for the austerity measures at the moment. Um, there isn't enough childcare around. Many families are therefore will have to be evicted, moving to areas of lower cost housing where ironically there are less jobs. Look, there are rising levels of child poverty in our country at the moment. There's already one in four children living in poverty in the UK. What we should be doing in public policy is finding every way we possibly can do to ensure that child poverty is eradicated, not made worse. And it's very hard to see how evicting children from their homes, taken away from their networks, taken away from their schools, it's very difficult to see how that's going to help any child at all. All right, Matthew Reid, thank you very much indeed. Devon Galani, thank you as well. The architect of this cab, Ian Duncan-Smith, will join us shortly on breakfast, 7.31. And start on a time.